Right, okay. I guess you can see. Hare Paul. Hare Krishna. It's Chaitanya Mahaprabhuji. And let's pay our obeisances to our spiritual masters. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Jnana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Namom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschata Deshatarine Jaya Shri Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vena Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna everyone Welcome all our second session where we are going to do the second chapter which is the second biggest chapter in Bhagavad Gita 18 chapters in Bhagavad Gita as it is 18 chapter is the biggest um just a few words a short for chapter two which is the summary chapter two is the conclusion chapter two is the summary where all the different options given in Bhagavad Gita and the ultimate conclusion is right at the end so let's get in straight. So the way we said, we are doing 18 chapters in 18 sessions. So consider this as a crash close. It's going to be a bit faster, unlike uh, our regular classes, but we will resume back to our regular classes later. This is, this is a taster for those who usually don't get the chance to come in the regular classes. So every Saturday, 10 to 11 UK time, online on Zoom, the same link, password will work. We have the slides and we're gonna do a bit of discussion. Feel free anytime. Let me open my chat as well so I can see, right? My chat window is open. Feel free to give any compliments, any question, any query, any regards, anything you have, you can raise your virtual hand and I will let you have a go. Why we are doing it and what is Bhagavad Gita? We saw that in the first session. So moving on now, let me stop the sharing here and I will share a presentation. I have a couple of presentations, the beautiful presentations and the presentation has been done by some other devotees. So I would like to pay my obeisances to them as well. I hope you can see the presentation now. This is where we are. All right, chapter two, contents of Gita summarized. Now, this is the index, right? This is what we're gonna do in chapter four. Now, again, there's another slide after that. That's also going to give us the summary. It's always good to summarize, like in the presentation mode, whenever we say, let the audience know what we are going to do. Then tell that what we are doing. And right at then, this is what we have told the same format we are going to follow here. So here in this slide, we are sharing that what I'm going to do in this session, right? The very first one, if you remember in chapter one, chapter one could be divided into two parts. First part, observing the army. Second part of chapter one where Arjun gives, Arjun starts giving different excuses, different reasons. And if you could still see the slide, you could see this. This is the summary of chapter one, where we use the acronym C, D, E, F, I. Five reasons, Arjun says, I cannot fight. Compassion, then destruction of family tradition. E, enjoyment, then F, the fear of sinful reaction. Because of all these C, D, E, F, he says, I 
cannot fire. I am indecisive. These things happens to us as well. In our life, when we have to make the decision a number of times, we find it hard to do it. Why? Because of one of those reasons which Arjun gave. And that's why Bhagavad Gita is so relevant to us, right? Now, if you see the arrow, and this is where what I call the flow chart, right? Moving from chapter one to chapter two, 2.6 is, chapter two, verse six is the one where Arjun says that that's it. I cannot decide. I could not do it. I will not fight. But then 2.7 is the key verse where very first time in Bhagavad Gita, Arjun surrenders. Arjun surrenders to Krishna and says, I'm your disciple now. I'm your student now. Please, please instruct me. Remember, the whole chapter has gone. Chapter one, Krishna was listening like a great teacher. And this is what any spiritual master will do as well. But Krishna is the Lord himself. Krishna was listening all. Krishna did not start until Arjun surrendered. And that happened in 2.7. So remember this verse. And if I will go back here, right? So 2.7 is where Arjun surrenders. Then we will see the difference. Now there are many, and if I will just move on to the next slide, if you see this, now there are many different parts given in Bhagavad Gita. So one is Jnana, Jnanamara mental speculation, meditation, reading scriptures, going to the forest, going on to the mountain, doing meditation for many, many, many years, learning from your own personal realizations rather than from the scriptures, rather than from the spiritual master. That's called Sankhya. That's called Jnana Marg. That's called the knowledge mark. So that's been defined the second section, right? The first section of chapter two where Arjun surrenders. Second, Sankhya, Gyan Yoga is mentioned there. The path of renunciation is given there. The third one, Karma Kanda, which is very famous and has been going on for ages in India. Karma Kanda, you do something to get something. And we will, we will do. Most of us from India, we are very familiar with this. And this is, this is a practice I would say 99% of the devotees do. Karma Kanda, they pray and they want something back. But what Krishna suggests, that that's not, it's still better than anything else, right? If nobody believes in Krishna or any kind of God or not praying to demigod at all, Karm Khan is really, really, really good. But remember, it's just a platform to get to the next level. What is the next level is Nishkam Karma Yoga, which we will see in detail in chapter three, but again, remember this is a summary. So we will see Nishkam Karma Yoga, which we mention as NKY, right? In Nishkam Karma Yoga, we could see what Krishna is saying from Karma Kanda level, how to move on to Nishkam Karma Yoga. But right at the end, Krishna will say, again, Nishkam Karma Yoga is where you are conscious. You need to move on to the next level and that's called Sthit Pragya. Now Sthit Pragya is the literal translation could be Equiposed. Now, what is equiposed? Equiposed is where you are a pure devotee. You just see Krishna everywhere. You see Krishna's involvement in everything. And you are as happy as anyone could be. You feel Satya Chitta Ananda, right? And that's why we are here. That's why we are here. So we could get to the next level of devotion. Right. And again, we, we will discuss there are different forms, different stages of uh, devotion, devotional service. And right on the top, we have when somebody becomes pure devotee, we have Bhava and Prema, right, where we see the hand of Krishna everywhere. So this is the overview. And again, if you go back here, this is a, another different slide, but telling us the same thing. Arjun surrenders. Second part, 11 to 30, Jnana. Jnana Yoga. Arjun, Krishna will explain Arjun the Jnana Yoga and on base of that will Krishna will say you should fight. Then the next is Karma Kanda. Remember Krishna is refuting all the arguments which Arjun put together at the end of chapter one. One by one. All of them. Compassion, enjoyment, fear, destruction, right? Indecisive. Then, then Krishna says what we call Buddhi Yoga which is Nishkam Karma Yoga. Based on all that, then Krishna will again say, fight. I explained you that, so you should fight. 
right? And then right at the end, Stith Pragya becomes fixed in Krishna consciousness, become pure devotee, right? All right, okay. So when we move, move further, there, there is a mention. Now, there are many, many, many things in this. But what is Aryan? Very first time when Arjun says there, Krishna, I cannot fight, right? The Supreme Personality of God had said, my dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon? Well, how this is what we say, Shri Bhagwan Vacha. So Krishna is saying it. My, my dear Arjuna, how have these impurities come upon you? They are not at all befitting a man who knows the value of life. They led not to higher planets, but to infant. So what Krishna is saying it, that what you are saying, you're a Kshatriya, you are supposed to fight. You're acting like a Brahmin who is saying that I cannot fight, right? It's Brahmin's nature to do a bit more, what we say about preaching, feeling compassionate. But Kshatriya is a ruler. If Imagine if the policemen will start doing it, right? And then uh, Krishna, well, Srila Prabhupada Ji gives uh, in the Pope, now, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada gives the analogy. And analogy is great. And I have a quiz. And I think the, this question is going to be in the quiz. Where it says the compassion for the dress of drowning men is senseless. It's like when Arjun is thinking, Arjun is thinking that, oh, I want to save these people. Krishna is saying, to whom? To whom you want to save? These people? But these, well, these are souls. And that's the very first one. What, we, what Krishna explains in Gyan Yoga. Krishna explains about what we call Atma Jnana. Atma is soul, Jnana, knowledge about soul. And what Krishna says, and we'll see in a bit in detail, Krishna says that you cannot, you cannot save these people because the body is material, the soul is eternal. To the soul, you can't do anything because soul is eternal and the body you cannot save. If you're trying to save the body, then you are trying to save the clothes of a drawer. Drowning man. Imagine a drowning man is there, drowning, and the helicopter will come there to rescue and will only save the clothes. So if you are trying to save this human body, it is just like you're trying to save the clothes of a drowning man. So remember that. Remember that. This is what Krishna is saying. And the definition of RN is giving as well. Somebody who is who is working towards self-realization, somebody who understands the true value of the knowledge and what kind of knowledge we should have, what kind of knowledge we should follow. And that's another thing which will come, which we need to think about. The definition of RA. Who is RA? RA is somebody who knows the value of life. RA is somebody who has the spiritual realization or who is working towards it, right? Remember that. Now, this from Vishnu Puran, beautiful thing about Srila Prabhupada Ji, apart from many other things, that all the references he gives. Now, when we talk about something, we should always have the references. We should not just make things up. When we say, we give advice to someone, or we put our thoughts together, we should always back up with the Shastric reference, reference from the scriptures. And that's what happened. What Srila Prabhupada Ji is saying, Srila Prabhupada Ji is saying, who is Bhagwan? Bhagwan, who is Ishwar, right? Ishwar is somebody who has all these six qualities. And this is, this is uh, given in the Vishnu Puran where Parashar Muni defines the definition of Bhagwan. And there is no other Bhagwan or nobody else who could have all these six qualities. Unlimited, unlimited fame, unlimited beauty, unlimited strength, unlimited renunciation, unlimited wealth like what we see in Dwarka, and unlimited knowledge. And more and more we will know about Krishna, we will realize that Krishna is the only one. We think of Vishnu, we think of Brahma, we think of Lord Shiva, think of any, any demigod or anyone you could think that is the definition that person got to be. And Lord Krishna is the only one. That's given in the purple, which is really, really beautiful. And as I said, the turning point was 2.7, which is Karpanya dosha upahatas bhava prachami tom dharma samura cheta yachrayana nishchitam brui tanme shishya spyam shadi mam tom prapannam. So that's where Arjun goes down and Arjun says, Krishna, 
please direct me. As a devotee, we should always remember we rely on Krishna, right? Without that, we cannot move. And that's where Krishna is. And the very first thing Krishna says, Krishna says, Dehi no asmin yata dehi komaram yovanam jara tata dehantara prapte dheeras tatra namuhyati. Krishna explains about the soul. As the embodied soul continuously passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age, the soul similarly passes into another body at death. A sober person is not bewildered by such a change. Due to COVID, number of people are dying. Well, if we think about it, it's only the body which is dying. The soul is not dying. No, soul is not dying because soul cannot die. Right? And again, as we will go along, we will see the true nature of soul. And that's why if you think about it, devotees are always happy. Why? Because they understand the true wisdom, the transcendental wisdom given, whether it's a job loss, right? Whether if you get affected, then obviously you need to realize you are not a pure devotee, which most of us are not, right? Certainly I'm not. So in that case, yeah, a bit of tint of hint could be there where you will, you will get affected, but more and more you will read about Krishna's message more and more. Lord Chaitanya's Hare Krishna movement, more we get involved, Satya Chit Anand, the bliss based on the true understanding. And that's what we are looking. And what then Krishna says the key is to tolerate. And somebody else says that another way is the key is the acceptance. Now, what is that acceptance if you think about it? Right? That acceptance is where if the night, day has ended and night has just started. And somebody will say, no, I want the day back. Doesn't matter whatever you will do, you will not get your day back. You cannot. The only thing is you have to accept that it's the end of the day. You have to wait until the sun will come back or you tolerate it, right? If it's cold, it's cold. You can't really do anything. The only thing we we'll remember from devotees perspective that we remember anything which is uncomfortable happening to us is due to my past karma. Right, I, I didn't do something good and that's why something bad is happening. Krishna is not responsible. Nobody is responsible for that. Even if somebody will come and slap me, then that slap is not just because of that. That person was just the instrument. It's like a post person, you know, the postman or postie will come knock the door and give you the message. And you might not like that message. But that message is because of your past karma. You're not going to start beating the postman. So, but this is again one of those understandings we get from the very first part, what we call jnana yoga, right? We understand this, the true nature of soul and the true nature of what we call sankhya yoga. Sankhya yoga is explained very nicely by Kapil Muni in uh, Bhagavatam, Kanto 3, where he gives the instruction to his mother. Mother Ahuti, the way Devuti, the way he explains everything about Sankhya. But what we are understanding here is the key words in which we say, who am I? Who am really I? Now remember, we are made up of two bodies, right? And both the bodies are material. So the soul is there and around the soul, there is a body, right? And the body is consists of two parts. One is gross, one is subtle. Gross is big, massive. Subtle is minute, nobody could find it. We might be able to feel it. Now the gross body is where all these senses are, all the five senses. But somebody says six senses, right? Six senses, if somebody says, oh, mind is a sixth sense, right? That is part of the subtle body. So all the physical bit you could see, that's part of the gross body. Subtle body where mind, well, false ego, mind and intelligence. These three things come together and then they make a subtle body. When the person dies, only the gross body dies, the subtle body, ego, mind, and intelligence goes along with the soul to the next birth. Now, the, we, you will think that what happens to the subtle body? For how long are we going to keep it? Well, until we are, as long as we are here in this material world, we will keep that subtle body. As soon as we will leave the material world, we will go back to spiritual world, that subtle body will disappear. We will not 
the soul will realize its true nature. Or if we are in touch with devotees, we pray to Krishna, we get into Krishna consciousness, we read the scriptures, the true meaning of it, and we start feeling it every day in our life. The true nature of the soul will reveal. It doesn't matter. We might get a cut in our finger, in our hand, on our neck. The pain will be there, right? But the lamentation will not be there. Remember this. There's a clear demarcation. Devotees, because they got the material body as well, they will feel the pain. It's not like if somebody will come and hit or give a tight slap. Not that I'm not going to feel it. I will feel the pain because of this body, but I'm not going to lament on it. I'm not going to get angry on it, right? I will not have those desires to hit that person back. And that's where the reflection comes in. But we only know when we will find out who are we, right? Antavanta me deha. This is another beautiful verses we have there. But this is, this is the understanding we need to get it from this slide. The material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is sure to come to an end. Therefore, fight or descendant of Bharata. So it doesn't matter how much we save this body, right? Like a lot, lot, of, lot of times what we do, we start uh, coloring our hairs. Now, no offense to any Mataji. Most of the time they do it these days. Prabhuji has started doing as well, male and females, all our culprits. But what are we doing? Is, isn't it that we are trying to make a fool of ourselves? Because we are getting old. If we are getting old, we should, we should recognize it day by day rather than going the other way around. But that's what it says. Who am I? The true nature. That colored person is not me. That, that those colored hairs are not ours. Yeah. So always remember that. Now, the mention of dresses there. Another thing before we get into that. Now, remember the way it goes. And I will give you the example. For example, they, they are two friends. I'm a bit conscious of the time. They're two friends. They go along on the railway station, right? One friend hasn't seen the train ever in his life. He doesn't know what train is. The other person has brought him here to show him the train, right? So it's like there's a devotee and there's a non-devotee. Non-devotee doesn't know about Krishna, doesn't know who the Supreme Personality of God is. But the other person is a devotee. He knows everything about Krishna. Now the person is waiting and the train is coming. When train is coming, train makes the noise, right? Ooh. You hear the noise. And this, this non-devotee, this person who hasn't seen the train, he said, oh yeah, I could hear, I could hear that noise. I know, I could find out what train is, that sound is train. Now think about it. That's true. The sound is from train, but the sound is not train. So that's a partial realization. The sound belongs to train, but the sound is not train, right? A lot of people, when they say that we are God, right? We are not God. We are part and parcel of God. And Krishna has said that there. Now that's what we call Brahman realization. This is a word we will see in Bhagavad Gita again and again. For now, just remember that Brahman is that sound of the train, not the train itself. That is partial realization. Then, then the devotee say, no, 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 hold on. You're right, but you, this is partial this way. And then the train is coming and the person could see the train and say, whoa, 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 yes, yes. I could hear the train. I could hear from where the voice is coming. That sound that's coming from this, this is the train. Oh yes, that's right, that's right, I got it. And the devotee will say, okay, all right, okay, you're good. That is train, but you have just seen the train. You still don't know the train. There's a second realization called Paramatma realization, where in um, India, I still remember the elder people, they always used to say that Lord is in the every atom, the way they used to call Bhagwan is uh, in Karn Karn, in atom, everywhere, wherever you will see, Krishna is there, Lord is there, Vishnu is there. That's because of the Param Atma. So in our body, we have a soul and we have a Param Atma. We have super soul, soul and super soul. Again, we will see that later. Buggy. Here, that's the second. So first realization, the sound realization is Brahman. The second realization is Paramatma. The third realization, when the train approaches, now the devotee says, well, this is the train. Let's get into the train. Let's explore the train. Get the personal relation with the train. Let's touch the train. <coughs> that is when we can go back to spiritual world and we could see Krishna, we could hug Krishna, we could touch Krishna, we could bow down to Krishna, we can play with Krishna, like in Gokul Vindavan. It used to happen when Krishna was here 5,000 years back. 
Now, that's that's a realization. This is what we call three phases of absolute truth. That, and this is, I gave you the example of sun. There's another analogy of sun. Sorry, I gave you the example of train. There's another analogy of sun where the sun is far away. We can, we all can have the sunlight, right? We can feel the sunlight everywhere. And that's the Brahman realization. The second realization, if we are going towards the sun, before we get to the sun, we get what we call sun disk. And that's Paramatma realization. And then we will go further and we can reach to the sun and we can see the personification of this Lord Sun. Oh, it's a demigod, we call it Lord as well. So these three are from sun and three from the train as well. Always remember this is a very, very nice analogies which can always help us to go further when we will get further in our spiritual journey. All right, okay, moving forward. Now, Arjun says to Krishna that if you will not fight because you are a Kshatriya, it's your duty to fight. If you're not going to fight, then it will be really, really bad. And this is your, because it's your duty. And if we are not going to do our duty, we will not able to get advancement in our spiritual life, which means if we are son, if you are husband, if you are brothers, we need to take care of a family. It's not what it says like in the Gyan Marga, a lot of people, they just leave everything and go in the forest, leave, leave everyone. We don't want to do that. We are devotees. We need to do our work. It doesn't matter if we are Brahmachari, if we are a student, our duty, our prescribed duty is to study. But when we get to the next level, when, when we go to the families, then our prescribed duty is to take care of our family. So always remember that, right? And then the next verse it says, as a person puts on the new garments, giving up the old ones, the soul similarly says that what we need to do. All right, okay. I'm just looking at uh, Pooja Mataji says, why does chapter two mean summarizes whole Gita? Hurry ball. Thank you Mataji for that question. Reason being, like what we just said, if you could still see this slide, and there will be another slide I will share where in that you could see Bhagavad Gita will give different parts, right? The way we, we can understand Bhagavad Gita, the way I remember Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, we can split into three different sections. First chapter, first six chapters are in karma regarding the action, how we should do the action. The middle one are devotion and the last one are in Gyan Marg. Right. So, and if you think about all the different marks, all the different ways, because devotion is just one mark, one path to Krishna. But Krishna says you can, even by Gyan Marg, we can reach Krishna. Even by Karma Yoga, we can reach Krishna. So there are different marks, and all these different marks are given in Bhagavad Gita. That's it. In Bhagavad Gita, this is what it is. Bhagavad Gita gives us the knowledge, the wisdom, how to reach to absolute how to reach to Krishna himself and using different marks. All those are briefly described here in chapter two. That's why chapter two is the summary of the content of the whole Bhagavad Gita. Because all of those, like I just said, Jnana, Karma and uh, Bhakti, Devotion, Nishkam, Karma Yoga, all of them, they are briefly defined here. That's the reason that uh, chapter two is considered as the summary. Now in this, now, as I, as I was saying, the very first part is where we give, and I'm going to share this slide with you, so don't you worry. I, I guess I have added everyone to the group. If you are there in the group, I'm going to share these slides with you. But this is where Krishna has given so many, and you can see in bracket, the verses are given, in, in which verse, which quality of the soul is given. And these qualities, they belong to us. Each one of us is a soul. The only thing is we forget about it. And we will discuss it further. We will, there are so many things we have forgot. It, that, that's the only thing. We, we are true, but we just forgot about it. As soon as we can think about it, we, we don't have to do anything. It's like you have five pound or 10 pound in your pocket. You just forgot. We just forgot that it's there. What do you need to do? We just need to realize. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to work hard for it. We just need to realize. We just need to realize our connection with Krishna. And that's it. That's it. There's nothing else. And what Arjun was thinking, Arjun was thinking sinful, that if I will kill my superiors, my seniors, then that will be sinful. Yes, but Krishna is going to explain that how are you going to do it? Because they are soul, they are not the bodies. And again, there's a bit of more detail where Krishna goes. And Krishna says, you're confused because of your miserly weakness. 
karpanya dosha because of your miserly weakness you are making you are con- so confused which is a mind is the disease of the mind and mind is material mind is the part of subtle body right so remember that then arjun right at the end arjun says okay krishna i accept you as my spiritual master and go along go along then then arjun says okay all right arjun says krishna you are the one and then krishna says okay if you agree i am the one now is the time when i'm going to tell you and what krishna says krishna says each and every soul is the fragmental part of me everyone is the individual identity the soul never dies right even after liberation the soul will never die soul will always be there okay right we are going to move on to the second part which is karma kanda and then nishkam karma and then the pure devotion but before that it might be the good time to do the poll so i'm going to launch the poll and where am i okay i'm here so chapter 2 the very first poll launching now you might able to see on your screen let's give few seconds to everyone what is the name of chapter 2 what is a material comparison compared in bhagavad gita 2.1 okay this is going to test how effectively attentively you are listening by along with that this will also make sure that you got at least those points which we think you are supposed to get from chapter 2 and that's the whole point behind it it's not to check anybody's knowledge but it's always good to at least have the basic understanding basic take away from bhagavad gita right now puja mata ji you did ask the question and i replied back to your question if you would like to add anything to it or if you want to get anything out of it if uh, if the question you think the answer if you think is incomplete please let me know so i'm just going to say hare krishna mahamantra once and then we will move on i'm going to end the poll there are seven questions hopefully everyone has answered those right hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare all right i'm going to end the poll now and i'm going to share the results with you right okay as you could see right the one highlighted in red that is the correct for first three that's the correct answer for four both a and b is the correct answer for five both a and b is the correct answer for six a killing his superiors that's the correct answer for seven why arjuna realizes he's confused due to his miserly weakness okay i'm going to stop share results thank you very much arivo so let's move on to the second one we are pushing for the time karma kanda karma kanda is one of those things we all know about it most of us don't worry i can i can share this and uh, you will have all the answers with you as well karma kanda when we pray to the demigods we say oh hanuman ji do this for me i will do that right oh i will go i will put uh, 11 rupees or 11 pound or 100 pound or 101 pound prashad to you please get that factory which i have put recently together please uh, get all those things oh please pass my kid oh if my kid will get into grammar school some of my students recently uh, took part in grammar school so grammar school is in my mind my son was in gram was doing the exam for grammar school last year so thinking about it karma kanda when we pray to someone requesting something back that's karma kanda krishna says that's not the way to go forward all the sacrifice all the rituals now one thing which i will briefly mention but we will do maybe at some point later is the 14 planetary system now what people don't understand and realize that the heaven when we say heaven we call it swargvasi 
Swargavasi, anybody in the family dies and we say, oh, that person has gone to heaven. Being devotee, we don't want to go to heaven because heaven is also material. Even Lord Brahma is also material. Where we are, we have roughly seven planets on top and seven planets at the bottom. Lower planets, Atal, Vital, Sutal, Talatal, Mahatal, Rasatal, Patal is very famous. And then we have the upper, Swarg, Mahatal, Janalok, Tapalok, Satyalok, where Brahmaji is there. And we, we do have Dhruvlok as well. But we won't go into detail, but these are the planets. These all are material planets. Now we don't want to go. When we say, oh, we keep moving into 8.4 million species, we keep moving into these. We don't want. We want to go back to Krishna, which is a spiritual world. What you see on the screen is part of the Goloka chart. And um, on my channel, you might be able to see a couple of uh, detailed videos on Goloka chart because we did that when we did our regular classes. And we will do that again later in New Year. We will uh, discuss the Goloka chart in uh, detail. Move, moving forward. Now, this, this is where Krishna gets into much more detail, saying that, it's, it's very hard. Don't you do that. Please don't you get into Karma Kanda, right? And I'm not going to dwell a lot on Karma Kanda because uh, Karma Kanda is one of those we know most of the time because that's how we pray. That's, what, that's how we usually follow our devotional service, right? Vivyasat Mika Buddhi Ekar Kuru Nandana. So this is where Krishna says, this is, this is a very classic example of one-pointed intelligence, which uh, Arjuna showed when he was a little the very first time when he started learning archery and that's one pointed focus we should have we need to go beyond karma kanda we do need to go beyond karma kanda if you won't able to do it we will get stuck we will get stuck so again i'm not going to detail in karma kanda but remember any any karma any action we do with the hope of getting something back that's bad we we don't want to go do that we don't want to do that. And it will get even much more clarified because sometimes there is a gray figure. Somebody say, oh, what if I will pray for my mother's health? Oh, what? Oh, my husband's health. But oh, why? Oh, what if I will pray for my job? Well, oh, why are you praying? Are you praying for your job? So your job is secured. You will get money, more money, and you will go on holidays? Or are you praying for your job so you will get money and you can utilize that money in the service of Krishna? It depends on your intention, not on the karma, but on the pure intentions we have, which is very, very clear. And we don't need to tell anyone, but in our heart, we know, right? And that's the first thing. We need to, we need to, Hare Krishna Mataji, Hare Priya Mataji. All right, okay, let me see, I think, oh, Suchitra Mataji was there. All right, great. Arrivo. So moving forward. Now, tortoise. Who is tortoise? Tortoise is, we being, being like the devotees, we need to be like tortoise. Tortoise, what, what tortoise does? Tortoise retracts all the limbs back, right? And this is what we need to do. What does that mean? When the kids are going to go into secondary, there are so many things there, right? People might be smoking, people might be taking drugs, people might be watching something bad. Now, kids, they need to retract their senses, take eyes away. If somebody is saying bad things about Krishna, take your ears away, move away from that. This is what we understand from tortoise. And that example is given. We need to withdraw our senses. right? And then they again, we can get into further detail about it. But the main thing is, rather than, rather than retracting, if we can engage our senses in higher taste, that's much better. And that's the next slide, right? Now, if somebody is eating dirt and you will go, why are you eating dirt? Don't do it. Don't do it. That person might not understand why you are asking that person to stop because that person is enjoying so much. Like there was a, there was a question. Well, there's a question just came through, but there was a, there was an incident where Indra, Lord Indra, the leader of the heaven, he was, uh, he had to take birth as a pig and he was very happy there eating stool. And Lord Brahma came, okay, your time is up. Let's go back to Indra. He said, what? I got my cute piglets here. What? I'm so happy my delicious food is here. I don't want to go anywhere, right? Imagine 
Now in this picture, you can see, if you will go to that child and say, don't play with that dirt, that child will not be happy, right? But what if, what if you will, you will give something of higher taste. You will give that child chocolate and that that child will understand. You don't have to ask that child to leave it. Child will automatically understand we, we, we need to go for, or, or any children, or even us, if we have something higher. So if, you, if somebody is enjoying in the movie, you will say, stop wasting your time or killing your time playing video games and, or watching movies. Rather than that, if you will take that person in the temple and say, okay, let's dance on the kirtan, let's listen to the melodious bhajans, then the person slowly, gradually will develop the higher taste. And that's the meaning of higher taste. Now, Mataji has uh, left a question here. Once soul has accumulated subtle body over past janmas. Yes, that's right. We do. We do. We gradually, it's, it's like a mirror. If you have a mirror in home, which we usually have, then gradually, slowly, the dirt goes on, right? We get first layer, we get second layer, we get third layer, right? Now, it's up to us how often we will do the cleaning. Every month, every week, or daily. Now, over the years, we got that. We have accumulated so much from the past janmas, both good karma and bad karma. But what Krishna will say here that we are not supposed to do. We are, well, initially, very first level, let's get into the good karma. Let's not do the bad karma. Let's get into good karma. But later on, we are not going to be doing good karma either. Why? Because that good karma will become part of us. That will become our nature. Fire does not burn anyone because fire wants to burn. Fire burns because fire's nature is to burn. Now it's up to us. We can burn our house from that fire or we can burn a candle from that fire. How we utilize it. And again, the example of higher taste and lower taste, you can see. And there are options. We always have the choice to make and the options are available. Now this is, this slide is very important. Spiritual fall down, right? This is where we think, we feel, and we want to do something. Now, very first thing about anything, you think of it. Now, there is a Lego where I live, South London, Sutton. There's a Lego nearby, Lego Land, Lego World, and Disney World, right? We were in Paris as well. So, very first thing is when you think about something. Now, how do you think uh, these days, a lot of time, those advertisements, they come around. You will think about it. There's a movie. You will see, oh, movies, advertisement, marketing happening. You saw that. And when you saw that, you got attached to it. You will speak to your friend. Oh, I want to go there, right? So very first thing, the object, you will contemplate. You will think about it. Either you will think or somebody will make you think. As soon as then that idea is there in your head, you got attached to it. And once you got attached, then the next thing will happen, right? Then you want to have it. And that's the term used, lust. Lust is not only the physical lust, it's the mental desire of anything. Now, if you, if you think about it, is there anything in your life which you have desired without contemplating about it? You might want to have a better job. Now, again, Praying to someone for a better job, bigger house, fancy cars, expensive clothes, bad idea. That falls into karma kand. You are doing something to get something back. That's not the idea. That's not what we want. But you want a job in Google because you know how Google, how good Google is, right? And you want a job in a grammar, you want an admission in grammar school because you know how good the grammar school is. So you have contemplated over, you got attached, then you want it, that desire. Now those desires are bad. And Krishna says, whenever we do the action, we are not supposed to have any desire. Now, what kind of desire? You will say, well, nobody will go to the job. I'm not going to go to the office then. If I will go to the office, then I have to have a desire. But what kind of desire you want to have? It? If I'm working here, I will work because that's my prescribed duty. What Krishna said to Arjun, Krishna didn't say to Arjun that leave Mahabharat, leave the battlefield and go do meditation. He said, work, fight, because that's your prescribed duty. But don't fight to enjoy the kingdom. 
fight because you are a kshatriya you are supposed to fight against evil against bad against adharma and the opposite side you consider them as your cousins consider them as your adharma right and you are fighting for them so we need to do the action but the desire is not to enjoy ourselves why do we want a better job bigger house fancy cars because we want to enjoy and that enjoy is on material level why because we don't realize who we are we are soul if you understand who we are we are not going to dwell into all these material things but when the desires desires will never end and you can or you can speak to any millionaire or billionaire i was lucky enough uh, to be associated and he's still in touch with him he had five different restaurants he was a millionaire right he was not happy no happy uh, this is my personal somebody i know very personally i stayed with him but you would know somebody or otherwise you could uh, take the interviews from these wealthy people because desires they never end doesn't matter what you got it will never end if you're praying for the better job better house fancy cars it will never finish and anyways you are working towards material you are you are try to save the clothes of the drowning men because we don't understand that we are a soul so that desire if that desire is not going to get fulfill we will get angry now think about it anybody gets angry why because something didn't happen or something we did not want and that happened and if we get anger now a lot of time in angerness what we do india pakistan cricket match happens whoever loses a lot of time people just break a lot of things in their home later on they repent why because they were angry in angerness they were deluded bewildered loss of intelligence they did not know what they did later on when they cool down they say it was just a cricket match and we know a lot of times we have done similar things right we have thrown things out we know so this is a process if you think about it how beautifully krishna has explained there now there is another question from mata ji how do we purify so we return to him in this life return to him and him with capital h i believe is for krishna right now how so we become pure devotee how do we pure, become pure devotee when we will start seeing krishna everywhere and this happens with the service whatever we will do we will do it for krishna we are with our parents we are there with our partner with our children for krishna right with children when we are spending time we are learning things about krishna when i'm talking to someone i'm talking about krishna that's how slowly gradually you will realize that we are the soul we will start working on that level the level of soul not the level of material body we are not going to work for it and if you think about it the older people the older we get older people they are not bothered of what they are wearing most of the time now there are many other example right now the very last part of this or right, before we go any further let's have the second quiz right there are few quizzes okay let's go for the second one you should see the second poll on your screen and mata ji to your question the how do we purify so we return to krishna in this life the last part of sec, chapter second is the answer where the word sthit pragya the perfect example and shila prabhupada ji's example is given on the screen and then that's when arjun ask so who is that person so the very first thing is again material now uh, sorry i'm i'm speaking over while you might be uh, filling the questions but just to utilize the time a bit better so what we have done so far very first thing very first part where arjun surrenders to krishna second part gyan yoga where we understand our body better again 24 elements of our body is given if we go into gyana those people who get into renunciation they become sanyasi they go and live in the mountain in the caves or they start doing the mental speculation from the meditation they are the ones right we don't want to be them and again chapter 5 and chapter 6 is uh, further clarification on the same topic then the next one is karmakanda which most of the us know about it 
मूविंग फॉरवर्ड निष्काम कर्म योग डू द कर्मा एंड अगेन आई एम गोइंग टू से लॉट ऑन दिस बिकॉज द नेक्स्ट वीक चैप्टर थ्री we will we will go in detail a lot and lot of examples and i will share a lot of uh, analogies with you and those analogies they make our head clear we need to be happy right we are happy if you want to be and we could be it's possible it is possible now somebody will say ah this is not possible prabhu ji what are you saying it's just a myth nobody can do it but trust me could do it i have i have done partly in my life and i have met many devotees who have done it right doesn't matter and when krishna reciprocates you are not going to work towards it but krishna will give you and i, I like the example i give for the kids but before that let me end the poll okay i'm going to end the poll now and i'm going to share the results with everyone don't you worry i will send you the link where you can see all these questions and the answers as well this is just to rejig your memory while we are doing it okay so because these are the questions when we read if you read chapter 2 in your own time which i will advise you to do and please read chapter 3 as well before we meet next time because then we will get into karma what are we supposed to do understanding all this summary in chapter 2 what are we really supposed to do like what mata ji said i want to go back to krishna i want to finish this vicious circle of birth and death how chapter 3 karma yoga right and we will spend a lot of time in nishkam karma yoga okay so i'm just going to stop sharing the results hopefully you have seen what others have said but as i said i will share the questions and answers with you in in the group so you have them but when you will read the chapter 2 yourself try to think of those questions right and then sthit pragya is the last part of this what you can see in the this is how restrain senses now somebody says oh any other religion i won't take the name but somebody said oh that religion is very modern very flexible i really like it why because there are no regulations there so really can you live without regulations husband and wife living together wife says oh i like a relationship with you but i don't like any regulation which means today i'm with you tomorrow i want to go with someone else will the husband like it no there are always rules and regulation doesn't matter which country you go to i've been lucky that in past 5 years i've gone to five different continents working living traveling business leisure there are rules there could be very weird rules and regulations i worked in middle east as well but there are rules and regulations based on their own wisdom doesn't matter where you go the rules and regulations are must and that's how we became right you can't really say okay doesn't matter what you do but listen to me right the person will drink alcohol after that person will lose the memory lose the sense of understanding the person will not hear you or will not understand you how are you going to do and what you're going to do right so regulations got to be part of it so restrain senses keep them under full control so we need to engage our senses remember the senses are the main thing the turtle how the turtle retracts the limbs when somebody comes goes in the shell that's what devotees do right when we'll go to the material world we will see everything but we retract our senses but rather than attracting even better we engage in krishna well nobody says okay don't listen to music listen to the krishna music there are so many devotional songs bhajans you want to dance dance in mangla aarti right in the morning 5 4 am and there are so many other examples in it and this is where the last bit sthit pragya is so arjun says and i can i can this is another presentation i have this is what i will discuss when we will start our regular classes or we will resume back to our regular classes in new year now i'm just flicking these through but you can see how much in detail we can discuss how much in detail so just a snapshot of this has been taken and discussed with you today right this is what we call flow chart in bracket you see the verses like this verse says this that verse says this and that's how we understand this is what nishkam karm yoga so arjun ex krishna explains everything to arjun and then says based on that you do need to fight you do do need to fight 
This is a uh, Shila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, one of the spiritual master. Very, very good. Now, Satguru, Rajogun, Tamogun, these are the material mode of nature. We will discuss that in uh, next chapter as well. But again, remember that uh, for this session, we are just doing the crash course. We're very briefly, I've explained to you, right, what it is. Like, for example, what you see now is in Nishkam Karma Yoga, leads to the path of liberation. How? When we perform our duties. We, we don't want to go to the office to do the job, so we get the promotion. No. But if we will do our work, because we are supposed to do it, we will get promotion and pay hike and everything which comes along with it automatically. And that's what Krishna is saying. Let's do Nishkam Karma Yoga. Imagine if a child is pressing the legs of mother or father or parents with a hope that tomorrow they are going to sign the document and give the property to my name. What are the parents going to think? But some kids, they will just go and they will just do it because they think they are my parents. I'm supposed to do it. And what parents will do? Parents will give the property anyways. But for children, just obeying to parents is the main thing, not the property. However, the property will come automatically. But this is the mistake material people will do. If you are not spiritual, your focus will be on the results, what you're going to get. But spiritually, your focus will be what you can do. And what you get is automatic anyways. A lot of, a lot of, my Siksha Guru is in uh, Dubai. He's a VP, right? Another friend of mine, he's a senior VP. They've been earning so much. And a lot of time they're spending so much in Krishna consciousness. They spend more, Krishna gives more. Like the time is pushing one example I will give. Sure, Mataji, I will uh, share all these slides. And uh, as I said, uh, we do discuss these slides and they are a lot in detail. Again, I did not put all these slides together. I worked a bit on some of the slides, so I cannot take the credit for all. But last, last topic, Arjun asked, this person whom you are saying who does Nishkam Karma Yoga, how does he speak? How does he sit? How does he walk? What he does? And this is what Krishna explains right at the end. And then Nishkam Karma Yoga, as I said, is the main thing we need to, the very first thing we need to do is to get to the Nishkam Karma Yoga. We get to that level, then the life is very, very, very easy for us, right? But again, going forward, this is what we have. Now, okay, I'm just thinking if we have enough time for one more quiz. Okay, how about we have one last quiz for today? Or maybe maybe we have a quick uh, feedback right at the end. But you, you can see the quiz on your screen. And if you do that, please. And that, again, I don't want to move away, or I don't want to extend it because I promised an hour, I'm taking 60 minutes. That's one of my theme, I usually don't go along, but yes, I appreciate. And that's the reason I always record. Sometimes uh, devotees, they ask, so they can always refer back. Sometimes I can refer back myself to see how I can improve better in the service. But always remember the way it goes that we need to read the scripture from the authority. We cannot take Bhagavad Gita in home and read it alone. You can, but if you are a CA, if you are an engineer, if you are a doctor, if you just read it at home, how great you will be, how great. You don't have any teacher to teach you. You will still understand. You can still go for it. You can go open the clinic and become a doctor. But very first time when we go to the doctor, what we check, we check, oh, the person got the doctorate from Oxford from Cambridge, from that place. Oh, yes, yeah. And that, that was give uh, authentication. And that's the exact thing we need to do, right? So this is the theme of chapter two. Work externally like other people do. Externally do not renounce work. Internally renounce and attach to Krishna. Just in one slide, we will still do the actions, but our mind is with Krishna, right? King Janak is one of the example given that he does things, but why? Within himself, he's thinking of Krishna all the time. His example is given in uh, Bhagavad Gita, right? I'm going to end the poll now.
And the reason is because it's 11, I just want to launch the last poll, which is on the feedback. And with that, I will say thank you so much for everyone, for your association, for your time. Appreciate that uh, I might have rushed. But as I said, this is just a taster session. All these sessions are taster sessions. So we get the gist of it because there are so many of you who might not be able to spend time, might not be able to take time out for the regular classes. But hopefully this will give you taste enough that from new year when we are going to start the regular classes, then you will say, okay, I would like to take one hour away from the week to learn, to hear about Lord Krishna who has given us rest of the time of the week, rest of the time of the month, year in the life. One hour in a week we can spend, easily we can spend. So, right, okay. With that, if, uh, if there is any question, I'm here. I would like to go along. Otherwise, uh, feel free. I would uh, I would end this poll now, and I'm going to stop the recording now as well. Hare Krishna. Thank you so very much. I look forward to receive all of you next.